Welcome back, good people. Let's dive into chapter three today, which is examining relationships between two variables using what are called cross tabulations or cross tabs. Uh, essentially, we're comparing the percentages of some variable of interest across levels of another variable of interest. This will become more clear in a moment. I'm gonna go through just a couple of these slides uh, to talk about what we need to understand in order to do cross tabulations, and then we'll get straight into to Stata. So first of all, you need to know which variable is your independent variable and which is your dependent variable. So you need to be able to identify what do you think is affecting your dependent variable. Um, and then we create a cross tabulation between those two and the second thing we need to figure out or to understand when we do a cross tabulation is where the percentages come from. So I'm gonna skip through this really quickly. As a reminder, independent variables are uh, the variable that influence the dependent variable. So the independent variable helps us explain or predict changes in the dependent variable. I like to remember it with this mnemonic by saying the independent variable influences the dependent variable. So an example of this is uh, in a research question such as, how is level of education related to one's confidence in uh, television as an organization? So do you believe in what you see on TV uh, and does that vary by level of education? So that's a research question. Take a second and think about which is the dependent variable here, confidence in television or level of education? Punchline, education is your independent variable because we hypothesized education influences your confidence in television as an organization. All right, so we need to be able to identify which is which, and that tells us how to create our cross tabulation and where to uh, where the percentages go. So generally in a cross tabulation, which looks like this, we have two variables here, presidential vote, whether they voted for Clinton, Trump, or another ca candidate, and age categories here. Uh, this is another good example to practice with. Which of these is the dependent variable and which is the independent variable? Wait for it, drum roll. Age, we're hypothesizing, influences voting behavior. So age is the independent variable that influences the dependent variable. Are you getting it? Are you getting it? All right. So what you'll notice about this cross tabulation is that age, the independent variable, is in the columns and the dependent variable is in the rows and the percentages sum to 100% at in the columns. So these percentages are within the columns because that's our independent variable. All right, so this is important because we need to be able to identify which is our dependent and independent. And generally we arrange a cross tab such that the independent variable is in the columns. And if so, that 100% should be at the bottom of the column if your independent variable is in the column. So here's this example broken down. Uh, instead of age categories, here we have ethnic groups and voting behavior. Here you hypothesize the independent variable is ethnicity, race ethnicity, because we think that influences one's voting behavior, which is the dependent variable. And we've arranged the independent variable in the column, dependent variable in the rows, and we see the percents are summing to 100 within the column. Why is this important? Because this, you could 
uh, do percents. You can arrange the table this way, but have your percents be um, summing within the rows, but that answers a very different question. Those percentages are interpreted differently. The question we want to ask is, is the percentage of white people who voted for a particular candidate different than the percentage of a different group that voted for that candidate? So the percentages are of or within race ethnic groups. That's why we need it to sum to 100% within the independent variable. So what percent of whites voted for Trump? 57% of whites voted for Trump. Only 8% of African Americans, and I know that it's of African Americans because the 100% is here, voted for Trump. And only 28% of Latinos voted for Trump, and so on. 27% of Asians. So we could very easily switch the percentages to be um, in the other direction, and that would be interpreted very differently. So here we've got tables that are arranged. It's the same data, but the data are arranged differently. The 100% in both tables are within the columns, but what is in the columns is switched. So here we have ideology and party identification. So here we're in this uh, table 3.3, we're answering the question of Democrats, how many are, let's say, what percentage are moderate? 28% of Democrats, and I say of Democrats because that's where the 100% is, oops, are moderate. 52% of independents are moderate. And only 20% of Republicans are moderate. Now, if we switch the percentage, the percentage is still within the columns, but we've switched the variables here so that we have Democrat, and Independent, Republican, Liberal, Moderate, Conservative. Now what we're answering is percent of liberals who are Democrats. 87% of liberals are Democrats. 47% of moderates are Democrats and 11% of conservatives are Democrats. So these are asking different questions. What percentage of uh, Democratic voters are liberal, moderate, or conservative, for example, versus what percentage of liberals are Democrats, as an example? Those are two different questions. So we always need to pay attention to where the 100% is. And generally, we want to arrange our table so that our dependent variable is in the rows, our independent variable is in the columns, and our columns then sum to 100%. This is the way that we want to arrange our cross tabs consistently. So. Whenever you do a cross tab, ask yourself the question, what is my dependent variable? Where, what is my independent variable? Arrange your cross tab such that your dependent is in rows, independent in columns, and then ask for column percents. All right, so let's move into Stata now. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and open up the data set. We're actually working with two data sets in this tutorial. Uh, both of them that have to do with college, uh, how college affects students. In the first one, we're going to be answering that first question that I asked, how is level of education related to confidence in television as an organization? That's using the World Values Survey. And then we're also going to use the 2012 General Social Survey to ask how level of education is related to views of the scientific status of sociology versus medicine. So we're asking two questions about how education is related to or associated with a couple of different outcomes, and we're using two different data sets to answer these questions. 
So hopefully by now you have downloaded all of the data sets from the textbook website into one folder for this course. And we're starting with wave WVS wave six dot data. I always do that. When am I gonna learn? Right click, open with, and I need to choose my state of 15 data set to open it up with. All right, so we see this world values survey wave six data has lots of variables. If we browse, we can see 436 variables and over 90,000 respondents. Ooh, exciting. So let's open up a do file for this chapter. We go up to window, do file editor, create a new do file. I'm gonna copy the full path that I just used to open the data. Oops, I think I copied more than I needed to. Notice it copies awkwardly with this um, carrot here. Uh, what is that? I don't even know what that's called. Um, so we needed to delete that. And now I can see that the path is correct because Stata, the do file, turned it red, which means it's reading it correctly. Uh, I'm also going to start my do file by just writing a comment denoted with asterisk, chapter three. And we start off with the WVS wave six data set. All right, and now I'm gonna type directly into the do file. And later on, I'm gonna be able to save this do file so that I can check my work or expand on it if I want to. So we're interested in primarily a couple of variables in this data set. We said education and college. So the variables are TV confidence and college. And by specifying column, I'm telling Stata that I want the percentages to be summing in the columns. So you'll notice a couple of things. First is that TV confidence no confidence and confidence went into the rows, while college or no college education went into the columns. So something handy to remember here is that the um, order of the command is such that, oh, oh my, two forward slash, <laughs> order of the command, uh, is y variable and then x variable. And y will be your row and x will be your column. And then when you specify column, that gives you percent within columns, which is exactly what we want. So in this question, is a college is having a college education associated with confidence in television? We've arranged confidence in television in rows because it's our dependent variable. We've put whether the person has a college education or not in columns because it's our independent variable. And now we can answer the question of how much confidence do people have based on having a college education or not? So for those with a college education, among those with a college education, 55% do not have confidence in television as an organization, compared to 47% of those with no college. That is, people with a college education are more skeptical. So let's look at having confidence. 52% of those with no college do have confidence in TV as an organization versus only 44% of those with a college education. And these totals here, oops, that doesn't highlight the way I want it to, but these, this total here tells us if we, what are the percentages of no confidence and confidence, but not broken down by college. So overall in the full sample, 49% of people don't have confidence 
and 52, or sorry, 50.6% do have confidence. But then when we break it down by college or no college, we see that there does appear to be an association between confidence in TV and college education such that people who go to college are more skeptical. Okay, so I know this is a lot to wrap your head around thinking about which is independent variable, which is dependent variable, where are the hundred percents, but this is crucial. So if you need to stop here, rewind, go back to the slides, come up with a couple of your own examples, this is a great time to do that because this is going to be really, really um, fundamental moving forward to understand this. All right, so we skipped over a couple of things, but I can just really quickly get back to those, and that is uh, we didn't do any tabulations on each of these variables on their own. We could have done that as part of the data exploration process, which we completely skipped over, right? We went straight to the cross tabs. But here we could have done a separate tab for each of these variables. And remember, we often like to add the missing option so that we can see if there's any missing data on either of these variables. And indeed there is. So 2% of the sample did not respond to the question on confidence in TV and less than 1% didn't respond about their education. We can also use the no, let, no label option, if you recall, uh, if we wanted to see what these look like, what the values are if you needed to recode these, how are these coded? Zero and one, they're coded dichotomously. So zero is equivalent to the no confidence I can actually cross tabulate, uh, let's see, no I can't, but I can put these two next to each other and see what these look like when they're next to each other. So here I've got con TV confidence and then with no label. So I can see that the zero represents no confidence and the ones represent do have confidence in TV. And for college, no college is coded as zero and having a college education is coded as one. We can double check that because I'm looking at these numbers, the frequency uh, to make sure that those are the correct ones. And then these again are the number of missing people who didn't respond to this particular question. Okay, so we skipped that portion for this tutorial, but I always think it's helpful to review how to do those. So part two is now opening a new data set. So we're going to open up a new da data set here, the G GSS 2012 data. So I'm going to do that by clicking on open and going to GSS 2012. And you'll notice that the variables in the variable window have changed. And I'm going to put a little delineator here so it makes it easy for me to spot where I changed data sets. If I were just running this do file, I would want to add the option clear so that I could tell the program, yes, open up this data set even though I already had a data set in memory. Clear that existing data set and use this new one but you don't need to remember that. You can just do it as we've done it up here. So now that we've opened up the GSS, we're going to look at the second question that we're concerned about, which is does level of education uh, predict views of sociology and of medicine as being scientific? So a research question here might be, do people have, do people with higher education view these fields as being more or less scientific. And we're gonna, again, identify which is the independent variable. So think about 
which variable we're hypothesizing will affect the other variable. I'm going to give you a moment. Okay, so the dependent variable is the views of sociology and medicine as scientific. And we think the dependent variable depends on the level of education. Conversely, <laughs> switching that around, the level of education influences views of sociology and medicine as being scientific, which makes it the independent variable. The independent variable influences the dependent variable. I know I'm getting kind of annoying repeating that mnemonic device, but I hope it gets drilled in there um, by my repeating it over and over. So if we know that, let's see, independent variable is level of education and the dependent variable is views on social and medicine as scientific. I just need to figure out what the actual variables are, but I've made this note to myself up here in the do file. This is also what's handy about the do file. You can make little notes to yourself about the data set so that you don't have to think about these things over and over. Now we know what's the dependent variable, what's the independent variable. And now I'm going to cross tabulate the two using tabulate. Social science, I guess, college. So sociology as a science and college education. Again, I've put the dependent variable first, their view of sociology as scientific, the independent variable second, and I'm asking for columns. Why is that? because the order of this command is such that the first variable will go in the rows, the second variable goes in the columns. So once we know that, we know which, and we know that we want our independent variable to be in the columns, then we just need to figure out how to do that. So in this case, how do we do that? We arrange it exactly like this, tabulate, sociology as a science. So do they believe, do the respondents believe that sociology is a science? This is a yes, this is a no. And do, what is their level of education? No college versus college. It never highlights the way that I want it to. Um, so here we can see that we've gotten the percentages within college categories. That's exactly what we wanted because we can now interpret this as being 52% of people, of people, so 52% of this 293 people with no college education view sociology as being scientific. 62% of these 129 respondents who do have a college education view sociology as scientific. These people who went to college maybe know a little bit more about sociology than the folks who didn't go to college. Um, and so we are testing this hypothesis. Is there an association between going to college and viewing certain disciplines as being scientific? This seems to provide support for that. Uh, the, there's a quite higher percentage of people who believe sociology is scientific if they went to college versus if they didn't go to college. A quick point uh, returning back to chapter two um, content is notice that we can't just look at the number of respondents. We wanted these percentages here. If we look at just the number of respondents, so let's see can't do that in the command window because I use the do file. Um, if we remove the column option here, we'll get just the raw numbers, right? The frequency of people responding to this question. And then we might go, oh, 154 people who don't have a college education say that it's scientific versus only 80 people who went to college. But why isn't that an appropriate comparison? Well, we had more than 
twice the number of respondents who don't who didn't go to college. So we can't compare just the raw numbers, the frequency of the response. We need to look at the fr that number as a percent of all the respondents in that group. And that's why we get percents within the independent variable. Okay, so next uh, question is about medicine as a science. I think I know where this is going to go. Probably more people think that medicine is a science, right? Well, let's find out. We arrange it in the exact same way. We don't have to change anything because we still think that a college education is the independent variable and the view on medicine is the dependent variable. Ooh, but now we see something really interesting, which is that only one respondent who had a college education thought that medicine is not scientific. That person represents less than 1% of college attendees in the sample. And 3% of people who don't have a college education think that medicine is not scientific. What do we get from this? Well, overall, people are way more likely to think that medicine is scientific, regardless of whether they went to college or not, right? The difference between 97% and 99%, two percentage point difference, not very big. But when we're talking about whether sociology is a science, you've got a 10 percentage point difference between people with college and no college. So most people think medicine is scientific, um, there is a difference of two percentage points between those with no college and college in thinking that it's not scientific. However, we only have one respondent here. So we would want <clears throat> to run a test to see if this difference is statistically significant. We haven't yet talked about what that means, so we'll get to that in subsequent chapters. Um, but this is certainly how we would start <clears throat> that investigation is looking at the cross tabulation between the two of these. Now notice what happens if we switch the column. Instead of asking for column percents, we ask for row percents. Now we have the, the 100 percent within the rows. So now we've changed the interpretation of these percentages and the percentages themselves have changed. This 65% of those who think sociology is scientific have no college degree. And 35% of those who think sociology is scientific have a college degree. So if you think that sociology is scientific, you're far more likely to not have a college degree than to have a college degree. <laughs> The opposite is also true, however, for not scientific. So if you think sociology is not scientific, then 73% of those folks don't have a college degree and only 26% of those folks do have a college degree. Either way, this shows us actually what those numbers are telling us is that m a greater percentage of our sample doesn't have a college education. So that's not answering the research question that we were interested in. Okay, so uh, a quick math note here. How did they get these numbers? Well, if we very quickly did the math here, 154 out of 234 is what? Actually, I'm just going to have, go ahead and run this so to, to test these numbers. So if I did display, display actually allows you to use a calculator within the program. And I want to get the percentage here. So I'm going to multiply this by 100. So 
So this is how they got the 65.81% by dividing 154 by 234 and multiplying by 100 to get the percentage. Similarly, try your hand at this one. How did they get the 73.9%? It's 139 out of 188 times 100. Uh, and again, we know that because the 100% is on this side. So wherever the 100% sums, that's what the number that is being used as the denominator. Okay, so we can save our chapter three do file here. And I don't think we recoded anything, so I don't think we need to save the data set in this case. We can close out of Stata and we are done with chapter three tutorial. Thanks for your attention.